Hey, this is Dr. Drew Jameson. And if you're looking to build strong bones because you've been told you either have osteopenia or osteoporosis, then this is gonna be for you. This is also for people that have a risk in the family tree. Maybe they have a grandmother or a mother that's dealing with osteoporosis and all they've been offered is maybe a medication and not enough lifestyle guidance. So I'm gonna break it down step by step. An awesome approach to building strong bones. So one of the first things when we talk about building strong bones is you have to stress it properly. And the principle is called the said principle and it's specific adaptations for imposed demands. That means whatever stress you put on a tissue, it will respond accordingly. And for bones, they need lots of stress because your body is constantly remodeling new bone all the time. It's picking up old bone and it's replacing it with fresh bone. Your entire skeleton gets recycled about every seven or eight years. So this is a very active dynamic tissue. And a lot of people don't know that. They just think it's sitting there statically for their whole life, but bone is constantly getting remodeled. So wouldn't it make sense for us to ensure that we're stressing it properly? And one of the biggest things is resistance training. People will think that they can remodel and build strong bones simply by walking, uh, doing yoga or cardio. Now, while those are great and they stress mostly the lower body, we wanna build bones systemically. So you gotta stress your chest and shoulders and upper skeletal structures. And that's why I love resistance training. The deadlift and the squat, two of the best exercises to build strong bones. And then you wanna get into you know presses, rows, chest presses, these are foundational movements that anyone dealing with any bone disease should be doing. Now, if there's hesitation around it, or you're just not sure where to start, I always recommend grabbing a qualified strength and conditioning coach, someone that can pave the way for you, build the plan, monitor you, make sure you do it carefully. It's never too late to start. My mom is 72 and I finally, after many years, convinced her this year on her 72nd birthday to start resistance training and she loves it. She's doing it several times a week. She's feeling stronger, she's building muscle because the big thing for her is I'm concerned about her bones because she's smaller frame and hasn't done a lot of resistance training throughout her life. And so this is critical and it's never too late to start. Whether you're in your 40s, 50s or 60s, this is a foundational thing you must look into. You gotta stress the bone properly and then that gives that signal into the body to send all the nutrients there. And we're gonna go through all the nutrients now of what bones actually need, because if you stress it properly and then get the right raw, raw materials in your system, you're gonna be way ahead of the game. Some vitamins and minerals that are critical for bone turnover, let's start with. Vitamin D3 and K2. Now we have an epidemic of vitamin D deficiency going on, so I always test and replete people's vitamin D because so many Canadians are low, low, low in vitamin D. The cool thing vitamin D does, it pulls calcium in from the digestive tract into the bloodstream. So now you have active calcium in your bloodstream. You want it to go to the bones and teeth because you don't want calcium to build up in the soft tissues. And that is a very common thing that happens with aging is people will get calci calcified arteries, uh, calcified um, aortas, which is the main artery in the stomach. You'll get calcifications in the shoulder for tendons. And so we don't want the soft tissues to calcify. You want the bones and teeth to have the calcium. So when the vitamin D brings the calcium in from the digestive tract to the bloodstream, the next most important vitamin is vitamin K2. You may have heard of K1 because it's involved in clotting factors, but vitamin K2 helps get the calcium into the bones and teeth. So together, they are very, very powerful signalers to get your bones built back strong again. So resistance training, vitamin D and K2, potent combo to get the calcium into the bones and teeth. So test and replete vitamin D3. When you dose high amounts of vitamin D3, you always wanna make sure it's paired with K2. There are still a lot of vitamin D products on the market that don't have K2 with it. So you wanna make sure you're taking K2. There's not a lot of great food sources of K2. Like the highest one is like goose liver, which a lot of people are not eating. Or it's coming from you know fermented soy products, which again, not a lot in people's diets. So very important. This is kind of like a long forgotten vitamin. The vitamin K2 intake is critical. The next one that a lot of people don't understand when it comes to bone is they just think it's a piece of calcium where there's a ton of other stuff Protein, bone is mostly made up of protein, collagen, okay? Which is a triple helix of three amino acids. And where do we get amino acids? We get them from our proteins. So beef, fish, chicken. Very important to get lots of protein, 
so that you have raw material to build your bones. Your collagen is a huge part of that. So I am a big fan of an omnivorous diet where you're going to have beef, fish, and chicken. I think that's the best way to get complete proteins without a lot of extra calories and things that can upset the digestive tract. So that is critical. You need to eat three to four servings of high quality red meat a week, thread in the chicken and fish in between, but make sure that one to two servings of that quality protein is happening every single day. Again, give the signal with resistance training, get the protein intake up and boom, you have a nice recipe to build strong bones. You can also, this is as of the last two or three years, you can get high quality collagen products. So collagen powders, uh, there's bone specific collagen powders that have a little bit of magnesium, calcium, phosphorus, plus vitamin D3 and K2. Wonderful supplement for someone dealing with bone issues because when you pair that with resistance training, you then have all the raw materials coming in. It's easy to digest. It's also supportive to the gut and collagen is great for hair, skin and nails and joint problems anyway. So it is a nice consideration to add to your supplement arsenal if you're trying to fix this bone issue. Another big one is vitamin C. Because if you look at what it takes to take amino acids and twist them into these collagen molecules, vitamin C is part of that process. Now, it's not just any old vitamin C because if you just get plain ascorbic acid with nothing else in it, it's not going to work as well. Because when you look at an orange and it exists in nature, it has vitamin C in there, but it also has a lot of other things. And the big ingredient you must have with your vitamin C is bioflavonoids. These are molecules that help synergize and make vitamin C do its job better and more efficiently. So you don't just want plain vitamin C or ascorbic acid, you want the bioflavonoids with it. This then interacts with the amino acids so that the collagen molecules can be made. So this is a very important thing to make sure you're getting enough of. Most fruits and veggies have trace amounts of vitamin C, but often when you're dealing with bone stuff and advanced disease, you might need even more. Pulse dosing vitamin C is usually the best option. Every few hours, you can easily handle 500 to 1000 milligrams because it's water soluble and most of the excess will just get urinated out. But to pulse dose it throughout the day with your collagen uh, is a good, good option. Now let's talk about some other trace minerals that make up bone. Most people, if you had to ask, they would know the calcium one. They would say, yep, calcium is needed for bones. The dairy industry has been pretty good at selling us that idea for many, many years. But what else is in there? Magnesium and phosphorus are two other big ones. So don't sell yourself short because magnesium is one of the most common nutrient deficiencies that we see. So you need to make sure you get lots of it. Typically between 400 and 1000 a day is required by most people. And they're getting a lot less than that because it's involved in over 300 different pathways. So this is critical, but it also is in the bone matrix along with calcium and phosphorus and collagen. So don't forget about the other nutrients that we need here. Okay, so for a lot of reasons, getting your magnesium levels up is important. Also good as it's a natural laxative, a relaxation option at bed. It sort of brings down the nervous system, helps with tight achy muscles and any joint pain. So magnesium is a lot of cool things that it does. It's not just for bones, but all these other wonderful things too. And then omega-3 fatty acids. So anytime you're dealing with a disease process such as you know osteoporosis, osteopenia, you need to control the inflammation in the system because more inflammation stokes the fire and the breakdown of bone will be way faster than you want it to be. So you're trying to tone and, and bring that system and turn over down. So omega-3 fatty acids, making sure that you have a good balance of omega-3 versus omega-6. Too much omega-6 tends towards inflammation in the body where the omega-3s help offset that and put you in a more anti-inflammatory state. So if you're not eating cold water fatty fish several times a week, you want to add some EPA and DHA into your supplement stack. This will help balance off that omega-3-6 ratio, lead you to more anti-inflammatory pathways, and it'll also set you up for a lot more prevention around heart disease and cancer as well. So it's a good thing to do. Uh, on top of testing and repleting vitamin D, you might also want to test and replete your omega-3 levels because you can do an easy RBC omega-3 check to see, relatively speaking, how much of the cell membranes are made up of omega-6 versus omega-3. And this will give you an idea of where you're at for risk ratios and just inflammatory states in general. So also very good idea. A big one to consider too for an aging female is the hormone system, in particular estrogen. As the woman enters perimenopause, goes through menopause, her output of estradiol or estrogen starts to decrease. Why does this matter? 
Estradiol is very bone protective. It's also brain protective and heart protective. So it's very important that if someone's dealing with a bone issue, you want to check the hormone levels. You need to know what the estrogen levels are doing because if she is not putting enough out from her adrenal glands because the ovaries have gone quiet, this needs to be addressed. And maybe some bioidentical, keyword, bioidentical hormone replacement might be a really big thing when it comes to saving the bone because estrogen puts the brakes on the bone turnover and makes sure that the bone loss is not exceeding the amount that you're laying down. So then this keeps your bones strong for many, many years. And as I mentioned earlier, it protects the heart and brain, which I don't know any female who wouldn't want a little bit more of that as they age. So again, I'm talking bioidentical. These are molecules that the body recognizes as the exact same. Very different from synthetic hormone replacement, which comes typically from other animals. You want the bioidentical one. This comes with way less side effects, and it's a molecule the body can use the same way that you would normally put out from your ovaries, but once menopause hits, uh, if the adrenal glands can't keep up, sometimes bioidentical hormone replacement can be crucial. I mean, this will also help with uh, you know, mood swings, hot flashes, night sweats, all those typical symptoms of menopause. But then the cool thing is, is it's really supportive for bone stuff. So if this has not been brought up by your doctor, you've just been told you have osteoporosis and osteopenia and they've just flipped you a medication and none of this other stuff's been talked about, you must inquire or find somebody such as myself, a naturopathic physician or otherwise that can get you on some bioidentical hormone support if indicated. So again, this would only happen with a proper workup, check your levels by blood, compare to the norms, take your clinical symptoms into consideration, and then that might be a big part of it. So this is important stuff. And the last one I wanna mention when it comes to bone turnover is the thyroid system. So a little butter-shaped gland that sits here and controls your metabolism. So it outputs thyroid hormone, which touches pretty much every system. But one of the big ones it touches is the bone system. And if you're having, again, too much bone turnover relative to what you can lay down, you're gonna have an issue. So you gotta make sure the thyroid is fine-tuned and that there's not either you know too fast or too slow because that will impact the rate at which your body lays down bones. So if you have maybe subclinical hypothyroid, hypothyroidism runs in the family, or maybe there's some Graves disease, some autoimmunity against the thyroid gland that either you've dealt with or someone in the family has, this is a key system to consider checking up on if there's a recent diagnosis of bone mineral density issues such as osteoporosis, osteopenia. Past that, the tracking and Monitoring should include the DEXA scans every so often so you can see are we moving the needle in the right direction. This will give you an idea of relative to the norm, how dense are your bones and are we making progress every six to 12 months or do we need to change something? So this is critical stuff. The, the five minute visit with your doctor is not enough time to go through all this. So you need someone that can spend the time with you to work you up for all of that stuff and to fix whatever we need to to get you feeling better. The thing with low bone mineral density is, you know, risk of fracture, um, pelvic fractures, hip fractures goes way up as you age, and that can severely impact quality of life. And that is just something we don't want. So if you're dealing with bone mineral issues, if you have questions, just drop a comment below, reach out. I would be happy to help. This is one of the areas that I love to talk about, as you can tell, and there are a lot of things we can do to help. So if you need to reach out, please do so and we'll chat soon. Thanks for watching.